to the second episode of Pink Pretty's Yarns podcast. Uh, first of all, I would like to say a big thank you for everyone that stopped by to watch the podcast and also to everyone that left a like or a comment or even subscribed. Um, I was quite overwhelmed by all the positive reactions, so thank you very much. It has inspired me to uh, make the second podcast, which hopefully you will enjoy. Um, there was, uh, uh, I need to make some changes to the podcast, uh, some technical changes basically. Um, Buck Fosser reminded me that uh, the sound was uh, quite low, so I turned up the volume in my computer and hopefully that will solve the problem. Uh, another thing that bothered me really was the lighting. Um, I have ordered a, um, a LED ring light, which was supposed to arrive yesterday, but I think due to uh, the corona crisis and uh, all the, um, the packages that get sent out, uh, it has been delayed. So hopefully it will arrive tomorrow and I will be able to use that on the next podcast to uh, well have more even uh, lighting. So hopefully that will um, just make a positive adjustment to the podcast. Um, what I forgot to mention is that my son, Killian, made the uh, music for the introduction. So uh, I want to thank him very much for doing that. And uh, I have had some comments about the music as well. So um, I want to thank him for doing that for me. Um, in today's podcast, I will be talking a little bit about my finished project uh, and my new uh, cast-ons and also what I've been up to um, with dyeing yarn. I made a separate video uh, to show you a little bit about the dyeing process, which I will uh, put down in the end of the vlog so you can watch a little about how dyeing yarn works and what, uh, what steps need to be followed in order to uh, well just dye the yarn and skein it and send it off. So maybe that's nice for you guys to see if you have no idea how uh, hand dyed yarn is dyed. So anyway, I want to start off with a project that I mentioned in the first vlog, which is this um, cardigan. I finished it. I haven't blocked it yet, but it's too comfortable to wear, so I'll get to it. I thought yesterday, hmm, maybe I should block it, but well, I don't think it would have been dry uh, by the time I uh, wanted to record the podcast, so I just decided not to book it and do it later. Anyway, um, I already talked a little bit about this pattern in my uh, first vlog. It's the uh, Kao Hai or Ku Hai, I have no idea how to pronounce it, uh, cardigan. Um, it was in Lana Magazine number seven and um, I did some minor adjustments because the yarn I had was not really suitable for the project. Um, I might do another one, but then I'll use a yarn which is more drapey because I think it's a bit uh, too stiff for my liking, but maybe it will be better once I um, block it. I'll stand up for you. This is the, uh, the cardigan. And as you can see, it has some nice uh, ribbing going up to the arm. The sleeves are quite short. And I especially like uh, this three needle bind off, which gives a nice seam. Um, the thing I changed is that I added uh, ribbing at the bottom instead of just uh, using stockinette stitch because when I did, it just um, didn't stand out as much as it did in the, in the pictures that I saw of this cardigan. So instead I just did a ribbing um, I did a twisted ribbing, but what I didn't realize is that normally when you do a twisted rib, 
uh, you knit in the round. So with going back and forth, I had to do a uh, uh, a strange, how do you call it? Uh, the purl stitches. I had to purl through the back loops, which was quite difficult. But I did three rows and then I thought, yeah, I really like the way this looks. So I uh, continued and I think I did about 15 rows of twisted ribbing. Um, what isn't really visible because I haven't blocked it yet is this edging. Um, it is supposed to help uh, or to prevent the cardigan from not curling on the inside, but it does anyway. So I hope that will uh, be blocked out when I get to it. But um, I really like uh, how it turned out. I have been wearing it a lot the few days because um, sometimes, you know, uh, the weather at night uh, or at night gets too cold for just a shirt, so uh, you just put you just put on the cardigan, which is quite comfortable. Um, the yarn, as I mentioned in my first podcast, is 100% uh, acrylic, and I well I do find it uh, very uh, um, cheap. It feels cheap. It knits. It doesn't knit very uh, nicely because, um, well, it's just really a stiff yarn, and I think it really shows in the way in uh, the way the cardigan drapes because it's just really it's quite stiff, as I mentioned. So um, I do think that I will knit another version of this one, but next time I think I will use some hand dyed yarn. Um, DK weight, uh, merino nylon or merino alpaca, which is really soft. So that's for next time. But well, I think looking at the, the price of the skeins, which was like one euros per skein, and I think I used four skeins. So this is a four euro cardigan and well, it does show. But anyways, it was a lovely project to work on. I now know uh, what changes that I want to make in the next one, so um, I think that will turn out rather nicely. But I do have a lot of projects that I want to be working on first, so it might take a while. Um, next up is uh, a pair of socks that I cast on. I'm keeping it in this bag. Um, it has lovely memories because um, last, no, two summers ago, we went to, um, sorry, we went to Brighton and I bought this, uh, project back uh, at Yak Yarn and Knitting in Brighton, along with some yarn and a pom-pom magazine. So this has very warm memories for me. Um, I cast on, I think about a week ago. Just basic vanilla socks, self-striping yarn. I think I do have the label. Let me see. No, I'll find it. I'll link it down. Um, but this is a commercial yarn, self-striping. Um, the gray yarn is commercial yarn as well. I'm not sure what brand it was, but I thought it would look nice with the brighter uh, stripes. And um, well, I've knit uh, a whole tube. So I, I thought I was going to do two stripes of ribbing, but I think I'll make that four or three, depending on how it looks. And then after uh, I finish it, I just have to put on, uh, put in the afterthought heel. Um, I really love this new stitch marker. It's by uh, Esther Star Fiber Studios, and well, I think it looks really pretty with. The colors in the yarn. So I was really enjoying this project. Uh, after finishing the cardigan I just cast these socks on and well uh, I've been knitting on these super small Knit Pro sock needles. Um, it took me quite a while to get adjusted to them because they are really really small and normally when I knit with um, circular needles I uh, tend to um, guide the needles with the palm of my hand. But when you knit with these tiny ones, there's nothing to hold on to. So I really had to learn how to 
uh, knit with just my fingers really and um, I think the first couple of days uh, my wrist was really hurting um, but I was able to I think uh, release some tension and the knitting went easier so um, well I, I do feel more strained than with my regular knitting but it's pretty okay so um, well I think after a few days I was not too sure if I was going to use these needles again but after knitting this is my second pair on these needles I, I, I do uh, I do like them I have grown to like them um, because there is no uh, uh, pulling needles if you knit socks on a magic loop then you just uh, knit half the sock and you have to pull the needle through and you, then knit again and with this um, sh with these short needles you just keep knitting so there's no uh, uh, no pulling needles which I find uh, quite convenient um, the downside of this needle needles is that uh, the toes and the heel uh, you still have to use the magic loop for those because there is no way I could knit a toe or a heel on these small needles um, I'm not sure if that is the way everybody uses this, these needles but I do think so so um, quite enjoyable to knit with I like the yarn it's well just sock yarn regu regular sock yarn um, so let's hope I won't get stuck in second sock syndrome and um, I promised myself I would finish these uh, in the next two or three weeks because I really do enjoy them uh, so it's a very lovely project to be working on um, I also cast on another oh no wait I have to show you something maybe it's just me but I always keep keep a piece of soap in my project bags so whenever I knit it just smells lovely and this piece of soap is just still wrapped in plastic but it just smells delicious sweet strawberry just really a summer scent so I, I always do this I don't know why I just enjoy uh, uh, the smell of it so maybe you want to try um, another project that I cast on is the boxy sweater ha look I found the label of the the self striping socks uh, it's tracking uh, that's I think that is the colorway um, I'll just link it down below oh yeah Citron I think it's a German company but I really enjoy knitting with this yarn I also have another skein uh, which has uh, green and grayish colors so uh, maybe in the future if I ever find the time to knit everything I want to knit those will be on the needles too but uh, it's a very nice uh, nice yarn um, the boxy sweater I knit one before and um, well basically what it is it's a very boxy sweater as the name says um, it's just you knit up from the bottom uh, to the armpits and then uh, just knit the front and the back and then put in some short sleeves and uh, well it just has a very very loose fit um, the pattern is by uh, Locatelli and she has a fingering weight version but she also has a DK weight version <clears throat> I knit the fingering weight one and I also knit the DK weight one uh, which gets a lot of wear because I knit that one for my daughter and she really enjoys wearing it um, my fingering weight sweater doesn't get a lot of wear because I dyed it in my own hand dyed yarn I dyed uh, three skeins for the, this project uh, and when I started off I didn't realize that it's very important to alternate between skeins I didn't know back then when I first uh, knit a sweater in my hand dyed yarn um, and even though the skeins looked very similar and I had dyed them all at the same time uh, one of the three skeins was quite uh, dark 
compared to the rest. I started off with a darker one, not realizing it was a darker one, but it resulted in like, I don't know, about 15 centimeters of just a darker shade. And then the rest of the sweater, the, the two other skeins were, were quite similar, so that was fine. But whenever I wear it, I just have a big stripe of darker yarn, uh, which really doesn't look very nice. So I haven't worn it a lot, sadly. So I'm giving the boxy sweater another chance because I really do like the pattern. Uh, I'm knitting it in commercial yarn. Um, it's well, green, blue, gray. I really enjoy knitting with those colors. And um, my plan is to make a shorter version. So uh, the first one I knit was just quite lengthy. So I'm just gonna crop it a bit. So I think it will look nicer on me. I am quite petite, quite short. So if you knit like a very long sweater, it just, just seem even shorter. So I'll knit another, another version, but a, a shorter version, which I think will be really nice. Um, this is very mindless knitting. You just sit in front of the TV, it's knitting in the round, it's all stuck in its stitch. I think about, I don't know, 25, 30 centimeters until you have to do something else. And um, I cast on the smallest size, which is, I, well, somewhere around 310 stitches. So it's just knitting rounds of over 300 stitches until you have enough length to start at the arms. So it's a very lovely knit. Um, I really enjoy these kinds of knits in between um, more difficult projects. But uh, well, I've only uh, just done a bit of ribbing. Well, just I, I, I just started. Um, in the first version I did, there were only, I think, three rows of ribbing stated in the pattern. Uh, but what I noticed, and I have seen others um, encountering this problem, is that if the ribbing is that short, that it just tends to fold, uh, fold over, which I really did not like. I kept pulling it down and, well, it did block out uh, a little, but not... Not completely. So instead of three rounds, I did double, I did six. And well, up until now, it holds better. So hopefully, I solved the problem by just adding a bit more length to the ribbing section because it really it is a lovely pattern. And well, I, um, I bought commercial sock yarn. I'll look it up which brand it was because I have two more skeins of these. And um, I think. Uh, the drape of this will be very nice because it's very thin yarn, fingering weight, and I'm knitting it on three millimeter needles. So I already uh, enjoy the way the fabric looks. So um, I think I made the good choice. Um, I had a small accident with this project because what usually happens when I knit in the round is that no matter how good I look, my uh, stitches always end up twisted and well having a project of over 300 stitches is well it's, it's really not nice if your uh, stitches are twisted because then you just get to rip it out and just start all over again so i made sure this time and the pattern stated it please make sure that your uh, stitches do not get twisted so I checked and checked and checked. Okay, well, these are fine. So I started knitting. I knit in front of the TV because I really enjoy knitting in front of the TV. But then um, the next day I was looking at it and I was laying it down on the table and I was like, no, no way. And the stitches were twisted. So I just checked back and I thought, where did I go wrong? And I did not go wrong in the beginning, but I went wrong after the ribbing and about the first three rows of just stock and stitch. Somehow I just did this and then they were twisted. So I just had to, uh, had to rip it out. Um, luckily I was able to salvage uh, some stitches. So I didn't have to start all over again because what I really dislike about starting a new project is the casting on because I always lose count of my stitches. I write them down by 10, so 10, 20, 30, and so on. 
and I just really don't enjoy it. What usually happens is that I think I have enough yarn to cast on and then, well, when I get to the last 15 or 20 stitches, I have to play yarn chicken and usually I lose, so I have to start all over again. Not this time though. Uh, I was able to uh, uh, to save some of it and well I just anxiously keep checking if I didn't uh, twist the knitting but so far so good so uh, I think I'll be uh, uh, knitting a lot on my boxy sweater um, last time I knit I was only knitting this project and it took me about I think eight weeks so uh, in the next podcast I will be showing the progress but um, it will be slow I think because I, I do like uh, more simple projects but I also enjoy having other uh, projects so, to work on at the same time. So uh, not, not just this. If I would be only knitting stock knit stitch for a long long time I think uh, it would get boring. But it does help me to relax so well in front of the TV is just perfect. So that's uh, the boxy sweater. I will link the pattern down below so you can find it on Ravelry. I really enjoy it. Um, I think, yeah, those are the projects I've been working on the past week. Um, I do have a project in mind that I need to uh, uh, that I need to start, but just let me grab the yarn. I died for that one. Um, while grabbing the yarn for my uh, project that I dyed, I found the um, the labels and the yarn for the boxy sweater. Uh, the yarn is by Lana Grossa and the colorway is uh, Fumo. It's a very lovely yarn to knit with. Um, I was afraid that there might be some pooling uh, because the, the blue uh, well, mine might end up very stripy, but it hasn't so far. So I'm really glad the way it's turning out. So, uh, Lana Grossa Fumo. It's a lovely yarn to work with. Um, now, next on uh, the yarn I was talking about that I dyed for another project. Uh, the project that I have in mind is the Baubles Shawl by um, Andrea and uh, Andrea Maori. Uh, it's a lovely pattern. You can find it on Ravelry. I'll link it down below. Um, it's a three color shawl uh, which has some brioche in it. Uh, it looks like a more challenging project um, and I just really uh, love the way it looked. I try to dye uh, the colorway that she has on in the uh, in the pictures of the shawl um, which I think went very well. Um, it's a combination of these three. Um, the blue skein I bought when we were on holiday uh, in the UK and we went to London and there was this lovely shop, I think it was I Love Knitting, something like that. I'll look it up for you. But anyway, the shop uh, ceased to continue so it the shop had to close down i have no idea why uh, but it was a very lovely shop uh, it had a, a a red leather sofa in the middle of the shop with two chihuahuas on it so it was very lovely to browse there i bought this cane um, with some other yarn but i still had this one left uh, it was the perfect color for this project uh, well you know sometimes you just buy some yarn and you just you just save it to look at because it's so pretty and you are just waiting for the perfect project and I think with the bubble shawl uh, this is the yarn so um, I did dye this one this is pink pretty's yarns um, it's turning up lighter on screen but it's more like a moss green and I also dyed a gray speckled one with some purple uh, speckles and um, well, I thought these, these would look very lovely together, but um, well, in my first uh, vlog, I talked about uh, taking a photo and then switching it to uh, black and white to see if the colors are contrasting enough. And to my surprise, um, two of the colors were very close together. 
um, if you go to my Instagram, Pink Pretty's Yarns, you can find uh, this set of three and then the uh, picture that I switched to black and white. And you can see that those two colors are very close together. So, well, I'm, I'm having second thoughts about using these three, even though I really love the way they look together well skeined. Um, so I dyed another one, which is this one. And this one is just a white base with uh, blue and moss speckles. And I think that this will be, um, well, I think these will be more, will have more of a contrast. So um, I think I might end up using these three. Um, but what I didn't notice is that I need two of these. So uh, when I looked at pictures for inspiration of the bubble shawl, I noticed uh, only later on that, um, well, there's a good portion of the lighter yarn. It looks like it's going throughout the whole shawl. So I looked at the pattern and yes, I did need two skeins. I only dyed one, so I will make two new ones and I think that I will pop this one in the shop. So, um, well, I still have a lot to, uh, uh, a lot of yarn to photograph and uh, put up in my Etsy shop. But uh, I'll put a link or a, a picture on Instagram once I'm, I'm done uh, listing all my yarns. Um, but I've been really busy the past week um, with dyeing yarn for Mirjam Molenbeek. Um, I did uh, an advent calendar last December for Mirjam Molenbeek. Uh, with um, uh, mini skeins of yarn and well the response was just really overwhelming. Uh, so this year we decided um, to work together again and um, well just uh, make the announcement uh, uh, that we'll be doing the advent calendar again. So then um, I have about six months to dye all the minis for the advent calendar because last year um, I think we started in October and well, I'm the only one dyeing the yarn. So I dyed about, I think 300 mini skeins in just a month, which was really too much work. And then Miriam ended up having to spend lots and lots of time uh, wrapping all the yarns and making the packages and sending them out. So this year we decided to uh, make it a bit easier for ourselves and just really start in time with uh, making another beautiful and gorgeous Advent cal calendar. Um, I will put her website down below so you can um, subscribe to her newsletter and once the, um, uh, the Advent calendars are uh, uh, online, you can sign up and well, then you'll have to wait a few months uh, till Christmas to uh, receive a gorgeous package. I really enjoyed seeing uh, um, uh, pictures of all the people that bought the yarn and knit with it. It's, it just really makes me really happy to see what everybody is making with uh, something that you put your heart and soul in. So that was really lovely to see. And it goes for all the yarn I sell because I just enjoy uh, seeing what people uh, uh, make with the yarn that I dyed. So thank you for those pictures. Um, I think that is all that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, I will link uh, the patterns down below, uh, the yarn, the commercial yarn that I'm using for my projects. Um, I will also uh, link Mirjam Molenbeek down below so you can check her website out. And um, well, apart from the advent calendar, I uh, dyed a batch of yarn, Pink Pretty's yarns, for her webshop. And um, well, as I mentioned at the beginning of my podcast, I did a small uh, vlog of how uh, dyeing yarn uh, uh, goes, what you have to do, the steps you need to take, and well, just the whole process of dyeing the yarn and getting it ready uh, to send off. Uh, I'll post this video right now uh, after this vlog, 
So um, I'm wrapping it up here. Thank you very much for watching again. Uh, if you're a new viewer, well, thank you, uh, thank you for watching my, uh, my video and uh, I will see you in about a week or two. Bye bye! Um, I dye my yarns with essay dyes, which means that I have to pre-soak the yarn first. I just add some uh, household vinegar to water and then just uh, put in the skeins and soak them for about an hour. Let me show you. You just push it, push it down, push all the water out. Uh, no, sorry, push all the air out. Squeeze the bubbles. I always find it fascinating how much air gets trapped in the yarn itself. So just make sure that it soaks through and through. And then let it sit. So this is the first step of dyeing a new colorway. I dyed a, uh, a grey base. And well, it's now heating so the dye will set properly. And then the next step, I will add some pops of color. Uh, you can see that the dye is almost absorbed but not completely yet, so I'll just let it sit for a while. Okay, for the fun part of dyeing yarn, at least I think it's the fun part, I just uh, speckled the yarn and uh, now I'm just waiting for the speckles to set and then um, I just let it cool down, rinse the yarn and let it dry before I can skein and label it. After I dyed the yarn, I rinsed it and uh, now it's hanging here to dry. Once it's dried, I can skein them, label them and then uh, send them off. Thank you.